Hello there and welcome back to a brand new day in the studio. So today's video is going to be a live narration, meaning I'm going to be speaking to you as I'm working. So I bet you didn't think I would return to this painting, huh? I was kind of struggling with this painting for the longest time, but um, you know, I think that I should not get paint on my hands. But anyway, I think that I should continue on with the hands, just because I kind of promised it <laughs> several videos ago. And uh, in terms of the colors that I'll be using, if you're curious about what colors I'm using, um, you can feel free to scroll down in the description box down below, because I do have a lot of colors on this palette, and it will take a long time to uh, read them all out to you one by one. So let's go ahead and jump into the painting. And the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is add a little bit of medium to the area that I'm going to work on. So um, this medium, again, is Neo McGilp. So I'm just going to add a little bit onto the hands. I don't know. I may end up working the entire painting today. I don't know. We'll see. And don't worry. I'll put the photo reference in uh, how about right now. So now you're seeing an image of our model, Madeline. And so I'm going to keep a picture of her to the top left corner of the screen as the painting develops so that you can follow along. And so I'm going to start off by mixing a, a value scale. My color value web is what I've been calling it lately. So I'm going to use a little bit of burnt umber, ultramarine blue, a little bit of my alizarin crimson permanent. Maybe I want more burnt umber just to get a thicker consistency. Cadmium red, yellow ochre. And so the way I observe these colors is just by blurring my eyes at the model. Uh, but at this point, I've been painting um, our model long enough. I can kind of memorize these colors, to be completely honest. So now with the cadmium orange, I don't know, let's, let's experiment. Cadmium orange, sap green, cadmium green. Perlene red. I'm actually running out of perlene red. I think that's my last bit of perlene red. And uh, flake white. I like to put flake white into the middle tone region of the colors. Right now it's looking a little bit too warm, so we're going to use cobalt teal. A little more cobalt teal. And again, these are, uh, I would say, more unconventional flesh tone mixtures. And lately I've just been going towards that direction, just trying to have more variety in my color mixtures. Now titanium white is going to live in the lighter values. So with a little more titanium white, we're gonna throw in a kind of a yellowish shade in the lighter tones. So that is what the cadmium, cadmium yellow medium, titanium white, even more. And, you know, I think we're going to start off with the half tones, just to kind of uh, prove a point that we can start in a, kind of an ala prima type fashion, even though we're going to be working wet over dry. Let's just make it a little bit lighter, a little more pink, then we'll be good to go. And I'm going to keep this brush on the side. This is going to be like my, uh, my recharging brush. I'm going to switch to a clean brush and to get right into here. Maybe I want it to be more pink. Perlene red. And I'm going to maintain this color value web, just like most of you know. Uh, the only thing is I'm going to be tweaking the colors now and then, but essentially you have seen how I'm going to basically be going about the color mixtures. So let's, let's start off with this. And before getting myself into too much trouble here, um, I think that I'm going to uh, stand back and with that brush that I was talking about for uh, the recharging brush, so recharging these colors, after standing back, um, I noticed that the hand, the shape for the hands could get a little bit bigger before I start to, you know, build in uh, the specificity. So again, like I said, uh, we're able to work uh, wet to dry in this kind of technique just because we already have that layer of oil over top and I just wanted to grow that shape a little bit more and that's just from uh, just standing back and making those observations so now let's get into that half tone that we were mixing up before so I'm going to start off kind of here in the middle 
close to the knuckles. So you're now in a close-up shot. Um, hopefully you can see a little better here. So I'm going to start off with the red. Or kind of the more reddish neutral tones. So that's going to be for the knuckles and then the fingers. So again, we're working from the inside out. Uh, very similar to the Alla Prima technique. Uh, that is, we're going for the middle tones as opposed to trying to, uh, you know, fill in any kind of specific outline in it. It doesn't matter which way you work, to be honest. As long as you know what you're after. I'm going to cool that down with cobalt teal. The cobalt teal should do the trick, and I think it did. And, um... It's important to, it's important for me right now to look at the shapes and in specific, what kind of shapes of color can I, can I infer? So this is kind of, if that's even the right word. So this is kind of a, um, a way of reading. I think I mentioned this yesterday, uh, yesterday's video. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is kind of like visual reading even though I'm painting what looks like a, um, a mitten right now I'm just trying to look at the image there and I'm trying to blur my eyes and just look for the shapes but before long I am going to get into some of the darks to you know give a little more of a boundary for these uh, outlines so again this is definitely a, uh, a way to work from the inside out. Now I'm going to switch brushes here. So I'm going to keep this as kind of like a, a drawing brush. And then I'm going to, well, drawing brush for the light values. I'm just going to get into this little area here. And now we're really going to want to put in some of the uh, outside shape. And so we're going to follow along all towards here. And uh, after standing back, I'm, I'm noticing that um, this could have been too orangey. So we'll come back into that later. But um, then I want to establish some, some of these darker shapes now. So again, like I said, uh, you can work from the inside out, even though you're layering. Uh, even though you're layering wet on the dry. And with a few simple straight lines and angles, I want to kind of give my best guess as to where the fingers are going to turn. And um, I'm more or less looking for these axes. So a little bit of an axis for the knuckles. It's more important to get the shape of the hand and fit the knuckles into that and then see the fingers, even though I was starting out with the fingers there. And hands, just like faces, can go through awkward stages. Especially when you put in um, new information. So right here, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to be entering into some awkward stages because we want to pinpoint where each one of the uh, metacarpals begins and then curves down. So it, the shape might be off. For, the, for a good majority of the time, but it's important to put down uh, something. Start with something concrete. And always use verticals and horizontals. So again, that's one axis for the knuckles. So for like this portion of the knuckles, And now for this portion of the knuckles right here, I'm going to draw in another axis. So this goes up for the pinky, curls. It's almost like they're wearing brass knuckles. Hands, uh, I know I'll admit, hands are a very tricky, 
tricky thing. But if you can find a way to simplify, so watch this. I'm gonna group all of these fingers. So all of these fingers here, I'm gonna group them together. It's just this simple outside shape. So let's see. This one comes out a little bit more. Tapers down. And even if we don't get it right, you know, the first, I don't know, the first three times or the first 300 times, the important thing is to, to just go for it. It doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter if you're, you don't get the exact shape right away. It's like in life, sometimes we just don't succeed. We don't succeed the first time, the third time, the 300th time, but that you have the initiative to keep searching, to keep pushing. That's what matters. I don't really believe in successful people. I believe in successful actions. Just like in painting. You know, I think that making sure that all of these shapes relate to one another is more important than just one shape working properly on its own. There has to be a relation. So I gotta look for this overlap of the shapes. So I'm thinking that, thinking that this is going to overlap this. Like so. And now we're gonna have the bottom portion of this. See how, what I meant? about working from the inside out, even though that this shape is completely off, even though this is completely off, we can still draw onto it. You know, eventually I'm probably going to have to redraw this just because of the, uh, I'm pretty sure that the photographic distortion might be causing me some issues here. But at least we're starting to, to get somewhere with the hands. So what I meant was I think that the hand's getting too small. So I'm gonna stand back and show you. Now I'm gonna stand back. And my guess, my guess is that the hand is getting a little bit small. I'm sorry, I'm having allergies today. So I, I'm thinking that this shape is getting small. And I think it's already distorted in the photograph and I may have even made it smaller in the photograph. Smaller than the photograph. So I think that the general shape is good. I'm just gonna get the same color. So what I mean by the general shape is here to here here to here, I think it's fine. I think that I need to push this further back to make the hand bigger. Push this higher up. And that way I can get more dimension of the pinkies over here. So this is gonna have to grow I think that this is going too far down. And again, I'm grouping all the fingers together for now. So that pinky will goes down to here. And like I said, hands are hands are very, very tricky. Um, so what you wanna do is not get too caught up with the uh, individual fingers or any little details like that. Like I could easily get caught up uh, with this, but rather I'm going to, you know, stand back, relate this shape to this, and get the fingers, and just group all the fingers together in one uniform shape. And it's okay that the, you know, the, this little shape here is kind of getting too small. I'm going to be able to come back and correct that easily. And another thing is that we're seeing just the fingers in this pose. So, it's gonna look small regardless just because we don't see the entire hand. 
So again, I think that this shape was all right. So that's the knuckle, fingers turning down there. I think that it's all right. It's just that we need to now further refine these observations. Fingers there. And now that I think I've corrected the size, at least of this hand, I have to adjust this one relative, this one relative to this one. It's always important to relate all of these shapes. I'm thinking about this in the abstract almost. So that is like, what kind of shape does this make? If this is like, I don't know, like the beak of a bird, some type of bald eagle or something, like what is the exact shape of the beak? Like this curls down, this goes up, I'm trying to describe that shape. And it really helps to abstract the shapes in that kind of way. So again, I think that's gonna have to move up. I'm gonna get a separate brush. Mix a little bit of black and white. Just for now, just to push that up. I'll throw in some uh, ultramarine blue. You can see how forgiving the oil paint is and just easily push that up. This is probably going to be, I struggle with hands, like part, I don't even know how many videos I've made with hands. Always struggling with them. But struggle is good. Struggle means you're learning. So fingers start over here. And I'm going to have to describe this, so I'm going to go into the ultramarine blue. Just so it's not too much of a floating hand, or in this case, floating half hand. Let's see here. Now where does this go? This overlaps all the way over here. And this goes and overlaps. This almost goes to this knuckle, to be honest, or maybe it goes exactly to it. I don't know. Trying to relate all of these shapes together. You know, sometimes you don't even have to know what you're observing. So long as you're observing and, you know, describing everything in terms of shape. Looks like her hand is kind of inside of the or half of her hand, and this one is also inside of the uh, sweater. Maybe it has like a hole in the thumb or something. Not sure. All right, so I'm going to return to shape mode. So I tend to transition from uh, kind of like this outline mode into shape and then shape into outline. So in that way we're working inside to outside and then outside to inside. So right now I'm just taking from the palette, just the lighter region of the palette. This is a cheap old synthetic brush uh, that's pretty used up, but it can still apply some paint. So I'm going to continue to use it. We're gonna have some more of the red over here. I tend to push this, like the, the red. I can't see it because the exposure and my skin is so light, but the, the red of the knuckles. And yeah, my skin does look really light <laughs> in these lights. And so yeah, I tend to push that a little bit. I don't know, I think it just kind of aesthetically looks better. I think if you push the warmth towards the knuckles. So I have right now like a middle warm brush and then like a, like a lighter flesh tone brush. Yeah, 
you know, at this stage, I'm not worried at all about the uh, fingernails. Rather, I'm just looking at this shape like this. Uh, I know I keep saying that, but I'm looking at the, the value change as the forms approach the fingernails. And then late, uh, later, I'll be able to put in the fingernails if I feel like it. But a lot of successful hands have been painted, believe it or not, with minimal to no indications of the fingernails. I mean, you might need some indication, I'll admit. But you don't need much for the fingernails, that's what I'm trying to get at. What's a little bit of cadmium green? Gonna add a little more nuance. A little more nuance to the, uh, to the fingers. Do see more of a greenish tint here. And again, you can see how I'm working from the inside. And I can easily adjust these outlines. I'm going to get another warmer touch. And I have the camera like right, hold on. Now I have the camera like right in front of the, the hands, pretty much front and center. And the way I'm painting like this is I'm leaning over the camera. That's why you probably see my shadow as I'm mixing. And, um, it is getting too orangey, so I'm going to tint it with my cobalt teal. And again, I just tint the flesh tones on the palette, but I still try to maintain that, uh, that color value relation on my palette, what I've been calling lately as the, uh, the color value web. You know, I still try to maintain that. But anyway, this is the uh, cobalt teal. And the main, the main emphasis on my videos lately has been uh, education, relaxation, and um, no, sorry, I was just focused on the pinky there. It's been education, relaxation, and positivity. So this is more of the. I don't even know. <laughs> I think this is more of the positivity because, you know, I'm positive and I'm confident that I will be able to get these fingers to work. And even though, as you may be hearing, there's a lot of um, noise going on around me, I'm not going to let that stop me. You know, just because the, your environment isn't conducive to what you want to do, just because you don't have all the resources that you need uh, to do something, you know, just do it. There are no, like, uh, one YouTuber that I like to listen to, the vlogger Casey something, nice that I think, um, says, says something along the lines that there are no excuses, only obstacles. I'm probably butchering what he said, but, you know, I think that that's true. You know, don't think about excuses, just obstacles. So I can't forget the um, the light on the fingers here. It's still I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna use the cobalt teal a little bit to tint it. There we go. Still needs to get a little bit cooler. And we're gonna get into more of a half tone here. So this, as a result, might end up being a much longer video just because I'm uh, narrating it live, meaning talking while painting. Which again, it does limit the painting a little bit, but it, it makes it a little more personalized, I think. And that's what I want to do more recently, like I've, I've been saying, is to uh, you know add more of the experience to this.
So we're going to throw in the red for um, this little portion up here for the pinky and um, the rest of the knuckles. You know, positivity is a big thing that I want to talk even more about. Um, you know, people may say things to us as artists. And, um, you know, everyone says turn the other cheek when someone says something negative to you. But, you know, just yesterday, I'm not going to say who, someone told me I was going to end up homeless. Like, like seriously? You know, and you just kind of, you know, brush that stuff away all the negativity out there, but like I'm, like I usually say, I've been trying to end my videos on the note that um, in a world that can be so negative, and I mean it, I mean, <laughs> turn on the news, um, in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. And that's what I want to do for you. I want to be a spark that's going to ignite positivity. I want to make your day better. You know, if you're having a bad day too, uh, you know, most of my days aren't really the greatest, but every time I get to be in the studio, every time I get to paint, it's like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a metaphysical kind of experience. And that's that experience that I want to pass on to you. Now we're getting much more clarity, I think, for the uh, the fingers. So now would be a good time to put something in, at least something for the fingernails. Start off with a simple value change like that on each of them. And like I said, I want to share more of my life with you. You know, I think that art, like a lot of things, is also very personalized. And you get to know the person a lot. Uh, and you're probably getting to know me a lot more. So again, you know, when things like that happen, like when someone says something to me, like I want you to, you know, I want to tell you what happened. But I also want to tell you how I handle things like that. You know, I don't just get angry and then try to... Um, you know, fight back or something. Instead, I'm just like, I try to be the bigger person. And I usually just revert to my studio. And just work. Because that makes me happy. So, cobalt teal. Titanium white. And what the heck. Let's just throw in something for the the light of the fingernail. Probably in the wrong spot, but if it is, oh well. Not afraid to move a brush stroke. A bit of light here. light over here you know now that I'm sharing um, something that was kind of painful for me let's also well, let's make this a question of the day what was something that someone said to you either recently or in the past that really upset you and how did you how did you manage what did you do not going to judge anyone if someone got punched or whatever. <laughs> not going to judge any of you. You know, I'm trying to open up to you. So we're putting in a little bit of light in the fingernails. 
I did say we don't need much for the fingernails, so I might end up actually blurring most of that out. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. And so now that's starting to look a little little goofy. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start to put in a little more, some more value transitions for the lights on the fingers. So like over here, we have a little more light. Just trying to be more descriptive. And one thing that's really difficult about these hands is that they're in full light. Full light is usually nice until it be, until you're painting hands, I think, at least for me. The full light is making it a little difficult, meaning the shadow is like right here and here. So all of this is in light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clean brush and just soften all of this. See that? I'm oh, sorry, I keep bumping into the camera. And uh, softening it kind of looks a little more keep bumping into the camera it um I, it's a little more naturalistic i think i think i had too many sharper edges there i do want to leave a sharper edge here but not here So we're going to take another attempt at this hand, a little bit of ultramarine blue, Let's see here, again this finger is overlapping the pinky. There's a little shadow here, or not even a shadow, but a little accent so that we can actually see the corner of the pinky there. And what is this? This is the index finger throwing in a shape for that. And oh, there's a ring here. <laughs> I didn't even notice that for the longest time. I didn't notice there was a ring there, but that's actually a, that's a good thing means I'm looking at the big picture not really caught up with detail and at least at a distance now these are starting to read like fingers to me even though there's very little detail A little bit of Neo McGill medium, ultramarine blue. There we go. Want the corner there to be a little sharper because it's kind of coming towards us and then softer over here. It's a little alizarin permanent. I'm going to make this a little darker, more red. And now we can put in some more stuff for the nails. So let's see. Start off over here. Let's start off with the light this time. See if that makes a difference. And uh, right over here is some light that overlaps. You know, like I said, you don't even need to know what you're looking at. 
if you just distill it into shape. And you'd be surprised at how that carries across the room. And by carries, I mean that at how well it reads across the room. Yeah, let, let's test that. I want to stand back here. Kind of looks like hands, doesn't it? And even though um, over here, you can barely see, like when we were close up, you could barely see, uh, you know, the, the light on this portion of the fingers. Um, all we see is the light on the... Uh, the fingernails or whatever, even though we're that this far back, or sorry, even though we didn't put that much in there going back here, it actually reads pretty well. So that means we're going towards a good direction here with the hands. Now it's just a matter of fine tuning small shapes. And we're gonna fine tune these little shapes here, the little nail there. You know, another nice thing about hands is that, um, you know, it doesn't have to look exactly like the person's individual fingernails, as opposed to maybe someone's eye or something like that. If we're painting a face, sorry, let's turn off autofocus. Let's check the autofocus, not focusing on my hand. Okay, we're good. Um, so you know, this pinky doesn't have to look exactly like, like her pinky, as long as it reads as a pinky on a hand from a distance, we're good. Um, and again, these little small details, I don't want to focus too much on them, but it's kind of important, otherwise her, the pinky is going to look a little bit too... I don't know, flat. So standing back, I see that um, right here. So we need a little bit more up here and then it tapers down. Then I'm going to counter that with um, cobalt teal titanium white cadmium green into the lighter region of the palette. I'm going to counter that with this kind of cooler light. Maybe did too much there, but we'll see. And while I have this light, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put more light into this area here. So it does need it. As long as it's not as light as this. Yeah, I did go too far with that. Push that back down. And see how we're picking and pulling. Uh, more specific information now. And again, this is usually stuff, like now, the putting in these little subtle tones. Usually stuff that I would cut out if I were to make this entire painting like a one hour long uh, portrait painting tutorial or something like that. And I will put in a mix. I mean, like I said, I want to be able to film as much as I can. Every single brush stroke like you're seeing with this one. But other times, we'll make it a little more catered to, um, you know, non-painters to watch. I don't think that non-painters would want to watch this much footage of, you know, painting a hand. The struggles involved in painting a hand. They would probably just want to see uh, 10 minutes of it when it works. And I'll do a, mi a little mix of everything. A little bit more light 
on this knuckle here. Some half tone over here. Just to get that form to turn. Now it just looks like a smudge, but let's put that again, a flat plane. A little bit of my medium and some ultramarine blue. And to push that dark a little more. I think I might end up working on the sweater a little bit, maybe even the entire painting. So squinting down, I almost actually don't want to put more information here, but I know that I should at least uh, delineate this finger from this finger. By delineate, I mean just further describe that this finger is overlapping this one, so we're going to put in some light here. And then a little bit of dark down here. Pretty much just perlene red and burnt umber. I'm going to throw in some some cadmium green and sap green. A little too red. Cobalt teal. Want a little more dark there. This form is turning away from the light. Oh yeah, the ring. I did say I forgot that ring before. We don't need much now. Ultramarine blue ivory black is what this brush stroke is. Let's put a little bit of straight ultramarine blue there. And then titanium white cobalt teal. I'm going to thin it down a little bit with my medium. And no more than that. That should read okay at a distance. Well, maybe. Maybe just blend that highlight in a little bit. Just like so. And yeah, I think that worked. So at a distance now, it is starting to read like hands. And I think that's going to be about it for today's episode. That being said, in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. That's certainly what I'm trying to do with each and every one of these videos. I want to provide something positive to your everyday life. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll be back again very soon.